Plato and Aristotle are both Greek philosophers and they all agreed that music affected the mind more than any other art and therefore was a powerful form of therapy to aid in healing the psyche, healing the mind, healing the mind. Most Christians will, 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 will live and survive in the comfort zone area of blessing. In the comfort zone area of his blessings. But God wants to show us supernatural blessings. And the only way to get to the supernatural blessing is to step out. But we bring you greetings from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Certainly would like to acknowledge the first gentleman of Rebirth House of Hope in Kuwait who is with us virtually. <laughs> Glory to God. As is the Rebirth House of Hope Church family uh, this morning for us or afternoon and, and night for them. Glory to God. So they're giving a little, little bit of sacrifice to their pastor to be with me in spirit. I certainly give honor to my pastor, Bishop Reginald S. Hinton Sr. and Lady Janet Hinton. Amen. As always, a joy to be in their presence and to all of my co-laborers in the gospel. Glory to God, we bless the Lord for each of you. And to all of my father's children, God bless you on today. As always, uh, I am humbled and thankful for another opportunity to stand before you to declare the word of the Lord, and, and, and this is especially true today as we have gathered, uh, congregated, if you will, to celebrate the anointed and appointed team of musicians that you have here at Mount Pisgah Harnett Original Free Will Baptist Church at 145 Prospect Church Road, Irwin, North Carolina. Amen. So if you will, just appease me if you'll stand to your feet and let's give them another resounding round of applause. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. But when we understand that many that music is ministry, glory to God, then maybe we will appreciate them a little more. Glory to God. Glory to God. We appreciate them for their work of ministry in the house of the Lord. Uh, as Elder it has already said and acknowledged, I do have family in the congregation, but because I was sitting and I couldn't see all of your faces, if, if you're in the family, can you stand? So I might, I know I saw Brandon, glory to God, praise the Lord. Can you stand just really quickly, amen. Hey, auntie, hey, brother, my niece, my cousins, my other niece, I got a house full of family, Bishop. Glory to God, amen, amen. I thank God for you being here with me on today. Amen, I need you to say amen and push me and I'll be out of your way. Fairly quickly, if thus saith the Lord. Ask if you will, if you'll turn your attention to the scripture at this time. For those of you who have your sword, we're going to 1 Samuel. The 16th chapter. We're going to read into your hearing from one passage of scripture, but I want to speak to you from three passages, and we'll address those as we get to them. From the same book in the same chapter. But, but, but if you find 1 Samuel 16 and 23, reading from the King James translation, if it's customary for you to stand, please do so. Not to honor the, the woman, but to honor the spirit. Glory to God. 1 Samuel 16 and 23. From the King James translation reads in this wise. And it came to pass when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, that David took an harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. For my time before you today and, and as the Holy Spirit giveth utterance, I want to share 
with you a message entitled, A Weapon of Warfare. A Weapon of Warfare. We have gathered to celebrate the team of musicians here at Mount Pisgah and what a cohesive team it is indeed. If you watch them closely, they are in constant communication with one another. Backing each other up, ensuring that every note coincides harmoniously with the strum of the guitar. Dancing to the beat of the drum as the sounds of the horns and the piano and organ collide in a musical embrace that causes our very hearts to sing. Yeah. Today we gather to appreciate these vessels of praise and to celebrate the creator of those vessels, who is God, our Father. Am I right about it? Today we acknowledge the profound and spiritual significance of music, a powerful tool that has the capability to transcend time and culture. Join me as we look at the profound truths embedded in the scriptures that music has always been one of the weapons of war. Our focus will be drawn from the life of David as we find it depicted not only in 1 Samuel 16 and 23, but also in 1 Samuel 16, 13, 14, and verse 18. So join me as we delve into these passages and discover the extraordinary role music has played in the life of this anointed king and how it continues to be a potent weapon in our spiritual battles even today. Can I get an amen? amen? Everything in ministry begins with the anointing of God. Even Jesus didn't actively begin his ministry until he was baptized by John the Baptist and anointed by the Holy Spirit. The Spirit's arrival empowered Jesus for his public ministry. So I want to share just three truths that I found to be self-evident as I contemplated this message. The first truth that I found is about the anointing. David was anointed to play. Our journey begins with the ending, which is taken from 1 Samuel 16 and 23. And it reads as follows, again, just for reference so that you don't forget. And it came to pass when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul that David took an harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. Let's now look at the anointing of David by the prophet Samuel. In Samuel 13, we read, Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David from that day forward. Glory to God. This anointing was a divine ordination, marking David as the one chosen 
of God. You may be asking yourself, well, Elder McLean, what does it mean to be chosen? What does it mean uh, to be selected? The Spirit of the Lord, let me answer you, the Spirit of the Lord rested upon him, David, in a special way. And in such that it was preparing him for the battles that lay ahead. A weapon of warfare. I don't know about you, but I've learned and I've got sense enough to know now in my young years that you're going to face some battles in this life. And, and, and they're not just going to be one or two. It's going to be battle after battle after battle. Glory be to God. But, 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 but when you've been anointed, glory to God, as David was, the anointing that was on David was his commission from God. So then what does it mean when God commissions you? It means that God has given you an order or an authorization to conduct the work of ministry that has been assigned to your hand. Somebody need to grab hold of that. It means that God not Juilliard, not Howard, not Campbell, not UNC, not Duke University, but God. It means that God has given you an order or an authorization to conduct the work of ministry that has been assigned to you. Glory to God. So in this thinking, this leads us to our first truth of the message, that music is a catalyst for spiritual anointing. This depressing uh, spirit uh, that was bothering Saul, this, this, this depressing spirit that, that, that we find in the subsequent chapter, which a subsequent verse, which is verse 14, it says, or in this verse, we encounter King Saul. He's being troubled by a depressing spirit. We find Saul in the throes of a spiritual battle. He is experiencing spiritual warfare. Maybe you don't know anything about that. But I can tell you some things about it. The evil spirit he is fighting with has been released upon him by God. Oh, I know y'all don't understand that. Not the God we love, not the God we serve. Why would he do such a thing to us? Why would he put me in such a predicament, in such a position, in such a place, cause me such distress and, 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 and trial and tribulation and sleepless nights and weeping till my pillow is wet and, and worrying about every little thing fixed on this side, torn up on that side, good today and bad tomorrow. This God that we say who is faithful. Why would he do such a thing? Well, let's talk about the spirit. It's a distressing spirit that's tormenting Saul. As a result, though, it's tormenting him because of something Saul has done. How many times uh, are we responsible for our own sufferings? How many times is, is something that we have done in earlier life, when we were sometimes ignorant and void of understanding, comes back to visit us in our latter days, and we call it karma? Glory to God. Somebody ought to pray with me. As a result of Saul's disobedience, I know y'all don't understand that word, but as a result of Saul's dis dis when God tells you to go left and you go right. When your parents say, don't go down there, but you go anyway. 
When your spouse said, well, maybe we ought not buy it right now and wait and buy it next year. Oh, ah. oh Lord. Ouch. Somebody say ouch. ouch. Amen. Kick my own foot up on that one. Ouch. Amen. But, but here is where we find Saul. We find him in the throes of a warfare. Because of his own disobedience, God released the evil spirit to torment Saul. You see, don't be dismayed or afraid because God's ways are not our ways. But in all things, whether uh, 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 bad experiences or good they all work together to produce a victorious outcome. If you don't believe it, let's look over at Proverbs, the 16th chapter. You'll find in there that the Lord has made everything for its purpose. The Bible declares that even the wicked for the day of trouble. This is the work of the Lord. God, alike, God always has a divine plan attached to his purpose. God always has a divine plan attached to his purpose. The torment of Saul served, watch this, as an opportunity to introduce David into Saul's life. Glory to God. Sometimes God will allow us to go through, and, 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 and the Bible talks a lot about the trials and, and the tribulation and the test. Uh, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But, but, but the Bible encourages us and says, but it is God that delivers us out of them all. So, so, so what that tells me is I just may as well get ready. Because they're going to come. But I don't have to worry about it. This is why the Bible also says, Yea, though I walk through. Hallelujah. Ah. Hallelujah. Brother McCoy, I'm not going to stay there. I'm going to face it, but I'm going through it. Hallelujah. Though I walk through the valley Hallelujah. and the shadow of death. That means there's going to be some dark days and some trouble that I must face. But, but God is moving me through it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So the torment, Saul, the, the torment of Saul served as an opportunity for, 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 uh, uh, to be introduced to David. If we turn over to Joel around the second chapter... God assures us that even when we've gone through, he's already has a plan. He says, I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. I, I think we read that first part and forget that second part. The my is God. The great army belongs to God. The action of it all belongs to God. Help. He says, I sent it Help. among you. Help. And ye shall eat in plenty. Here's the, uh, here's the through. Here's the through. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God. That has dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. And ye, watch this, an affirmation. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. Glory to God. That's encouraging today. You may think, what type of music ministry message is this? But if you hold tight. In his search for relief, Saul's servants proposed a solution. First lady, they were looking for an answer. And much like the bishop, you know, there's always someone around offering a suggestion or a recommendation. As it is at the board table, everybody has an idea, uh, a feel-good thought, sounds good today, won't work tomorrow. 
always cheaper, but always more expensive in the end. So in their search for relief on Saul's behalf, the servants proposed a solution. And the solution was music. Look at God. Look at God. Isn't that just like him? He had already prepared the resolve for Saul's issue that he himself allowed to take place in the beginning. So God is not one-sided. He may bring an issue, but he's also bringing resolve at the same time. We just have to be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord so that we may stand still and see the salvation of the Lord come to fruition in our lives. Do we have anybody in here willing to wait? We have to wait on the Lord. Somebody said he, he, he's the slowest man I know, but he's always right on time. Glory to God. I, I never said he was the slowest, but I certainly have said, Lord, when you're coming. Lord, I'm still here. I'm, st- I'm still waiting. But look at God. He, he'd already prepared the end from the beginning. So, so now David comes uh, on the scene, a, a skillful harp player. He was summoned to play for Saul. And so he's obedient. As the music resonates, we witness a remarkable transformation. Here in this transformation, we find our second truth. I only have three, so y'all better get your amens ready. Here we find our second truth. Music is a means of spiritual transformation and deliverance. In 1 Samuel 16 and 14, it states, and the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and and a harmful spirit from God tormented him. So God's good spirit left and the evil spirit set in. David, the harpist of healing, in verse 18, we find, we gain more insight that David's musical prowess As one of Saul's servants describes him, listen how he's described. The servant says, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, who is skillful in playing. He's a man of valor, a man of war, prudent in speech, and a man of good presence. And the Lord is with him. David's musical ability, church, wasn't just for entertainment. Don't y'all throw nothing up here. I'm going to say it again. The musical gifts, mother, were not designed for entertainment. They weren't designed to be a showpiece for man. Glory to God. David's musical ability was given to him as a gift by God to glorify the God that he got it from. And so we need to keep that at the forefront of our minds, musicians. Singers, harp players, instrument players. Our gift is for the God that gave it to us. Glory to God. It was a recognized gift. It was recognized as a unique gift endowed with spiritual significance. Glory to God. David's music uh, became a weapon, not of destruction, but of the transform transformative power of healing and comfort. This is what music does. But you've got to be anointed first. We must learn how to use the weapon of music to move from despair to rejoicing. Glory to God. Uh, What has the word taught us about our praise? Praise facilitates access to the God that we say we serve. Glory to God. Uh, That being said, our perpetual praise provides a clear and unhindered passage to the throne room. 
Therefore we cry, we enter in the gates with thanksgiving and the courts with praise. Uh, the Bible teaches us that why art thou cast down on my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Let me make that plain so y'all understand what Psalms 22 and 3 says. Because we've said it in our own way so many times. God inhabits the praises of his people. Glory be to God. Psalm 73 says, uh, when I thought to know this, uh, it was too painful for me uh, until I went into the sanctuary of God. Then I understood in the end, I will praise church. It presents solutions to problems we cannot see. Glory be to God. Lastly, our third truth. Music is a weapon of healing and comfort in the midst of spiritual warfare. The healing power can be found in our worship and in our praise. The book of Psalms is a replete that in, in, that in, with instances where David, now a renowned king and psalmist, poured out his heart in worship and in praise to the God of heaven. Psalms 147 says we are reminded of the healing power of God's presence through music. Yeah. He heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds. Yeah. Worship has the profound ability to mend the brokenhearted, providing solace and restoration in times of spiritual warfare. Am I right about it? Praise be to my God. Praise ye the Lord. Praise him with the psaltery and the harp. Praise him with a shout and a dance. For it is good to sing praises to our God for it is pleasant and a song of praise is fitting say the word of the Lord do you remember Paul and Silas I remember that chains were broken through the singing of the hymns glory be to God go back to Acts if you don't believe me around the 16th chapter we witness an extraordinary scene of spiritual warfare in the story of Paul and Silas they were shackled in prison but their response was not despair their response wasn't to host a pity party their response wasn't to respond in anger but their response was to worship their response was to worship glory be to God it's not my word but it is the word of the Lord it says around about midnight Paul and Silas were in that Roman jail praying hallelujah and singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to them glory be to God there's something about the anointing glory to God it doesn't stay dormant in one place it'll start in that corner and then it'll move throughout the sanctuary I heard somebody say it's just like fire shut up in your bones when it comes upon you you can't control it glory be to God Paul and Silas were down in the jail and they started real low come by here Lord come by here come by 
They was in jail. Sister Jackie, they was in jail. And they weren't supposed to be praising God. So they started on the DL. But I promise you one thing. Pastor, you can start real humming. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. But there's something about that name. First lady, you start saying, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And the more you call him, the better you begin to feel. Am I right about it? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Hallelujah. Come on, Jaden, praise him with me. If nobody else will get excited, I see you praising him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It got good to him. It got good to him. And th th their low rumble began to be some audible words. Lord, I thank you for being so good to me. And one of the other prisoners heard it. He said, I can't sing, but I just want to say the word. Lord, I thank you for being so good to me. I want y'all to get excited because music is the way through instead of crying praise him glory to God y'all trying to get me to sing but that, that's not what pastor told me to do the Bible says and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately, somebody say immediately, 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 all the doors were open and everyone's bonds were unfastened. So what does that tell you, Pastor? That when I give God the praise, every shackle must be loosed. When I The sun, the S O N, sets free. It's free indeed. Their musical worship became a weapon that not only broke physical chains but also set captives free. Somebody's bound today. You can't fool me, I know too much about him. Somebody's bound today, been struggling for a long time, been dealing with some things for a long time, thought you had beat it, then it came back, feel like now you're defeated by it, but I want you to know you have the victory. Glory be to God, through Christ Jesus. Church music has always been one of the weapons of warfare. The, 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 the horns and the trumpets and the drums and the pianos and the organs, all the string instruments and the song have all been used in times past and will continue to be used because they're instruments of God to motivate men to march in and engage in battle. So instead of us scouring in our troubles, we stand up boldly as we ought to and declare that we've got the victory. The sounds of these instruments alone drive off what were in history drove off the Indians when they signaled that the Calvaries were coming. Yeah. The Bible has examples all through it of the power of music yeah. as a weapon. When Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, the priests were, were, were to march around the city seven times. You know the story. Yeah. 
the trumpets and uh, blowing the trumpets and the ram's horns. It was it was it was on the signal of the long blast from these trumpets that all of the people were to shout. And when they did shout, the walls came tumbling down. Glory to God. It's not just a story. It's not a part of a novel. It's not an essay. It's truth. It's, spirit, it's gospel truth. When we are obedient and we call on the name of the Lord and we declare victory. So you have to declare your victory because we have power in our mouths. Whatever we, we have the power to create what we speak. So when we're speaking negativity into the atmosphere, we're creating those situations in the atmosphere. Glory to God. But, but, but when we speak peace and life and love and longevity and wellness, it, it might take a while, but it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. We have all, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to close, Pastor. I know we got to get out of here. Just a couple of more points. We have all seen the high pitch uh, voice that breaks the goblet in commercials. Uh, but, but, but the spectacle of the trumpets and the voices breaking down the walls of Jericho. What more spectacular could we ask to see? Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Am I right about it? Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. And Bishop Hinton made us and not we ourselves. It is he who hath made us and not we ourselves. So we need to learn to make some noise. God. I'm not talking about white noise. I'm not talking about white noise. Bishop, I learned a few new nuggets in studying for this message, so I thank you for that. White noise. You know when you're in the house, maybe the television isn't on, Elder, and you, you, but you can hear the refrigerator humming in the kitchen. Mm, 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 mm. In the kitchen, you in the front room, but you can hear it. Every once in a while, first lady, as you clip, pat, you know, flipping through the channels of the TV, you know, there's not a, a, a viewable channel on every station, right? So there are some channels you get to that have that, sh -sh -sh -sh, that staticky. That's white noise. That's white noise. Glory to God. White noise. I'm not talking about white noise. Because, see, white noise, I, I, I had to look it up because I, I said, well, I ain't too sure about all of that. But, the, but, but what I found was that white noise works on multiple different frequencies. In other words, white noise is created in a chaotic manner. And it is the chaos that causes the noise. It is the chaos that causes the noise because of the various frequencies that it's trying to hit. It's all over the place. It's all over the place. But in Christ, we're not talking about white noise. Glory to God. He said make a joyful noise. Not only did he say make a joyful noise, but he said let everything... Deacon Spears, am I right about it? Let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. Let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. Whether good or bad, happy or sad, rich or poor. Oh, <laughs>
God. Glory be to God. I want you to know today, music has always been an instrument of spiritual warfare. I'm closing. I want to share a personal story with you. During my ordination, and I know you've seen people ordained here at this church and in the conference. As a matter of fact, we just ordained a young lady in our conference, this conference, last conference, a couple weeks ago. But when I was ordained as an elder, they gave me the hymnal and they gave me the Bible and they laid the hands of Presbyterian on me. And as I sat there through a million emotions, I wondered to myself, why am I getting a hymnal? I know a few hymns. I know a few songs. I used to sing in the choir at Coach Chapel. I know a few. But after the laying on of hands of the Presbyterian by Bishop D.W. Elliott, District Elder Elliott, District Elder Curry, Pastor Hood, uh, and, and, and our deceased Pastor McNeil, and the First Lady of D.W. Elliott, she laid hand. Glory to God. She explained to me, she said, Honey, in this journey, you're going to need a song. She said, days are going to come when nobody's going to be there to encourage you. She said, but you find a song that encourages your heart. She said, so this is why you get a hymn. I said, look at God, answer my question. I just asked it. This is why we give you the hymnal. She said, but you're going to stand on this Bible. She said, sometimes they're going to say amen and sometimes they're, gonna, they're not. She said, sometimes you're going to preach in front of one, sometimes you're going to preach in an auditorium full. She said, but you have been called and commissioned to preach in season and out of season. Glory to God. The hymnal has carried me a long way. I'm a learned piano player. I've taken music for many years. I can play, but I know that's not my gift. But in that, I learned to go to the piano and play to myself. It didn't have to sound good to nobody else in the house because they didn't know what I was playing for anyway or why I was even at the piano trying to play. But music is a weapon. And I just submit to all of you, whether you sing or play an instrument, God has commissioned you. He has ordained you. He has consecrated you for his ministry. So if you're doing something contrary, if you're involved in something contrary, if you know your walk is not circumspect with the Lord, be careful. This is not play play. This is not play. This is judgment work, Bishop. And every man is going to, we get, we are, we are too guilty of enjoying the praise ourselves. We like it when we get those accolades. And they're fine. We work for them. We work hard for the accolades. Go to school, study, sacrifice. We work for those accolades. But when we put the accolade before the purpose. When we forget what the purpose is for the gifting. It's not that your name be written on a signboard or up on a big poster. No, it's for God. God did it. God did it. It's because of God. It's his gift. Yes, Lord. Louis Braille. You know the blind man, Braille? Louis Braille discovered the power of music to give life when he entered the National Institute for Blind Youth in Paris. He discovered that the blind are equal to the seeing in music. And in fact, they often excelled in the seeing. More than 50 of the graduates at that time played as or blind, these are blind people. More than 50 of the graduates at that time played as organists in, in the parish churches at that time. 
This is in the early 1800s. He took lessons on piano and organ, and he was a, and, and was richly talented. He would so enter into music that he was caught up into another world where there was no stumbling, no hesitation, and no fear. Music set him free from his earthly limitations. Church, I submit to you today that music has this power to set men free and thus to motivate them to go beyond any handicap. He did so, and he helped the rest of the world of the blind to do so by developing braille systems of reading. Music has tremendous healing power in all sorts of ways. We all know how, how David, by playing the harp, calmed the demented soul of Saul and brought peace and stability to his troubled mind. Music as a medicine for the mind has been used by people throughout history. Glory to God. I submit to you today Plato and Aristotle are both Greek philosophers and they all agreed that music affected the mind more than any other art and therefore was a powerful form of therapy to aid in healing the psyche, healing the mind, healing the mind. Church, if you're here today in the sanctuary, you're worshiping today and, and, and you sense the call of God in your life to use the gifts of which you have been endowed. I submit to you, you must first know Jesus. You must first come to him. Music heals, it soothes, and it delivers. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus, just now, just now, oh come to Jesus, come to Jesus, just now. Oh, come to Jesus, come to Jesus, come to Jesus, just now, just now. Keep singing. Come to Jesus. Oh, don't you doubt him I submit to you that you must first come to Jesus As we found today in the text of the message Young David was a skillful player But he was first anointed by the messenger of God I submit to you we can do nothing Keep singing we can do nothing that is impactful without the anointing and the leading of God's Holy Spirit. Young men and young women who desire to be in ministry, sure, go get the degree, the Master of Divinity, theology, all of those, all of the degrees you need. But you need to first get with the Lord. He needs to first anoint your life for the work that you want to do. It's not that he doesn't want you to do the work, but he wants to anoint you for the work. Glory to God. Because see, in troubled times, what's hanging on the wall won't help you. But what you have in your heart will deliver you. And not only will it deliver you, what's in your heart is impactful because God placed it there. Glory to God. Glory to God. If you're here today and you don't know him in the pardon of your sin and you just want to get to know who he is, this is the time. The altar is open. 
If you don't want to walk up, you don't want to deal with the deacon, you don't want to deal with the mother, stand right where you are. I don't have a heaven, nor do I have hell. But if you're here and you want to be saved, if you're here and you're in a backslidden state, you know it. You know it. You may hide it from pastor, you may hide it from loved ones, but you know and God knows. If you're in a backslidden state, if you're seeking your body, and you know you need a touch from the Lord. You've been praying on your own, trusting on your own, but today you want to touch and agree with somebody. There's power in numbers, and there's power in unity. If you want to touch, come. Come. Come today to the altar. Glory to God. We come to celebrate, but what greater celebration? The, the heavens rejoice over one that comes to the Lord. Glory to God. It is my desire as also is found in 1 Timothy where it says who he is the one who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. I submit to you we can obtain the highest of degrees and acquire associations with the most affluent in our society. Those who by access and authority can promote and position us in some of the most coveted positions where we can exercise our gifts but without the anointing. Without the anointing of God the true purpose for the gifts will not be realized. Music is a spiritual weapon and to use it skillfully to drive away demons and to heal is a segue to return to the return of the joy and the peace and the anointing of God must be present. Yes. Just now to God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, God. Bless your name, Jesus. Thank you, son. Yes, yes, yes.
God, you said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. God, you said we ought to come boldly to your throne of grace. Father, you said we ought to confess our faults one to another and pray one for another. Father, you said you are our light and our salvation. Whom shall we fear? For the Lord is the strength of our lives. Of whom shall we be afraid? When the wicked, even our enemies and our foes, come up against us. God, you cause them to stumble and to fall. Lord, we thank you today. God, we come with a heart full of praise. Because you have said, let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. We know that praise is comely for the upright. We know that you have given us the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So God, we come today with a praise on our lips. God, we don't even come asking you for anything. God, if there's one in our midst who requires or desires salvation, they're raising their hands right now. God, they're surrendering. They're raising their hand as a sign of surrender unto you. In the mighty name of Jesus. But the rest of us, God, who are already called and anointed and appointed and set aside, we come with a spirit of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We come saying, great is our God. And he's greatly to be praised. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Oh, we come lifting up holy hands in the sanctuary. Oh, we come with the shout of the archangel God. Oh, we bless your holy and your righteous name. Oh, glory be to God. Oh, thank you right now, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Have that own way, Lord. Have that own way. You are the super ruler of the universe. Rule and super rule in the lives of your people. Let your spirit, Father, flow from heart to heart. Oh, from breast to breast. Move about on this altar, God. Move about on this altar, Lord. Somebody, God, need a touch of healing. Somebody need mind regulation. Oh, God, somebody need a way made for them. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Trouble in mind. Trouble in their homes. Children don't want to act right. Trouble on the job. Somebody loves you, Lord, and wants to love you even more, but God, they don't know how to. So much going on in the world around them. In the name of Jesus. Drugs and alcoholism and death and debauchery and sorcery and witchcraft. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. God, root out every spirit that's not like you right now. Root it out right now. In the name of Jesus, alcoholism, drug abuse, homosexuality. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we speak to it right now. We renounce it right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, have your way, God. Let the acts of your anointing cut to the root, God. Destroy the root. Destroy the root. In the mighty name of Jesus, generational curses. Generational curses. Generational curses. God, loose right now. Loose in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Have thine own way, Lord. Some, God, you've got children who are playing church. No more playing after today. No more, no more. Somebody has heard your truth on today. Glory to God. The truth, Father. The truth that makes us free. Oh, and he who the Son sets free. Yes, he's free indeed. Glory to God. The glory to God. Glory to God. He who 
dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my strength, the shade on my right hand. He is my helpmeet. Hallelujah. He's my strength. Glory to God. Yes, He is. Your word, Father. Your word, God, is a light on our path. Oh, yes, it is, God. There's power in your word. Hallelujah. Faithful. 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 Faithful is he that promised. If I hear him saying, if you could just believe. Can you believe? If you would just believe that he will. He wants to do it for you. He wants to do it for you right now. If you would just believe it. He's able to heal the brokenhearted. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Glory to God. There's no problem too large or too small for the God that we serve. Oh, he's El Shaddai. He's El Elohim. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's Jehovah Tiskanu. Yes, he is. He's a great I am. He's an ancient of days. He's a root of David. He's a bright and the morning star. He's able to do exceeding and abundantly above all we ask or think weeping may endure for a night weeping may endure for a night glory to God but joy cometh in the morning his anger lasts for just a moment joy cometh in the morning glory to God yes Lord somebody say yes Lord yes Lord raise your hand and surrender yes Lord Yes, Lord. He's pouring. He's pouring. He's pouring. He's pouring. He's raining. He's raining. He's raining. The anointing. Higher heights. Deeper depths. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You may not have a sin in your pocket, but I want you to know you're rich. Ah, you're rich. Ah, royal. You're royalty. You're royalty. You're a royal priesthood. A holy generation. Glory to God. Glory to God. If you could just see how much he loved you. If you could just see how much he loved you. Glory to God. I love you to death. And to life. But God loves you so much more. Everything you ask him for, he gonna open the door. But the requirement is obedience. This is not for one, but this is for all. God said, what you ask me for, I'm waiting. But you gotta step out in faith. You gotta step out in faith. We are good with lip service, but we gotta put faith into action. And when we put faith into action, we'll go beyond our comfort zone. Glory to God. Glory to God. Musicians, can you come down just a little bit for me? I want to say something. And we're closing. Bishop, you can come. I think you have the closing remarks. Whenever we move out of our comfort zone. Y'all listen. When we're in our comfort zone, who's in control? Say it again. Amen. But in order to get the real blessing of the, what God showed me was that most Christians will, 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 will live and survive in the comfort zone area of blessing. in the comfort zone area of his blessings. But God wants to show us supernatural blessings. And the only way to get to the supernatural blessing is to step out. Step out. 
See, when you step out, that means you really, Bishop, am I right about it? You, you take risk. When you, when you step out of, out of your, your own little comfort zone, now you're taking a risk. But when you take the risk, God said, okay, they're out on the ledge now. They're out on the ledge now. Now I can come in. Now I can come in and really show them how God blesses. God bless you. Heaven ever smile upon you. Bless your name.